Um, I, all right. Thanks, Abby. Uh, by the way, this is this really weird, right? This this virtual thing. I don't find this good because you can't really interact with me as much as you like when you see me. You can stop me when when I am in class with you. But as it stands now, it's the best we can do, right? Okay. Uh, effect of inclination. Now, before I go into the the topic proper, okay? You recall that we start off. We started off with. Uh, with that strip footing on a surface, right? Then we make modification. And if you recall that 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 picture, okay, what picture am I referring to? Uh, I'm referring to this uh, picture of the. Oh, I can get to my notes here. This is the first time I'm not the first time. This is the second time I'm giving a lecture to. A very quiet group. Why? Because everybody is unmute. The same group was always interacting with me. I miss that, guys. Anyway, uh, where is the figure? Should be. Just give me a second while I'm trying to look for it. Okay, All right, it's uh, the figure figure fourteen point one eight, right? Assume mode of failure for a strip footing. Yeah, it was uh, from that strip footing we said to ourselves that uh, we have vertical load, right? And then we have a strip footing. And then uh, initially it was uh, on the surface, and then uh, we said that we have to make modification once we got into the equation. The equation was C and C plus Q and Q plus half gamma B and gamma, right? So we have been making all the modification because uh, we said to our, we we said to ourselves that we may have uh, a footing that is not a strip. We said that it may be a circle or it may be um a square right so we had shape factor right then we had depth factor because we said to ourselves that the you know the depth of a footing sorry the a footing is usually located under uh the surf under a surface of soil right and then you also notice in that figure 14 18 it is a vertical load all right it is a vertical load and we have also previously taken uh, into consideration this inclination of the load. And if you recall in section 1.34, it is Branch Hansen's, right? Uh, I, C, I, Q, and I, I, Gamma for the inclined loading. Every time we see something that is different from figure 14.18, we must uh, provide the modification, all right? We also set to ourselves respect to uh, Scampton right uh when we have to use it right so i'm trying to just now uh, remind you about those things that has been happening uh with us in the past it i mean since the last time i saw you i think it's been like almost two months now so I, even i find myself uh almost <laughs> you know forgetting all this stuff so now apart from Brinch hansen we have this uh, mayhoff right now if you see on page 12 may half you see the inclination due to the cohesion and the inclination due to the surcharge that is given right is now one minus alpha over 90 degrees now alpha is being de being uh, defined as inclined to the vertical all right the the yes here's, here's the load right that is the y-axis, the vertical axis. That's the horizontal axis. I should just hold it like that. So that's our load. And this is being defined by alpha. Okay, guys. At least say to me that you are you 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 are getting what I'm saying. Yes or no? Okay, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, good, fine. All right. So then you. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. So then I have I gamma, right? I have I gamma, right? So I C and I Q. C is the same. Is the same uh, formula. Oh, yeah. I C and I Q is the same formula. I gamma. All right. This is due to the unit weight of the soil. All right. It's one minus alpha over theta. Okay. Uh, theta is different. Now, uh, sorry, not theta. This is uh, P. All right. The angle of curing resistance. Now, can we get to the example? The example is on page fourteen point six three. I have it on this file here. Besides me. I don't know where yours is. Here's my example. This is figure page 1463. Here's the example. Okay or not? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, now uh, that example here this is the inclination of the uh, of the putting that is just taken care of, right? Determine the percentage reduction in the ultimate capacity of a square putting two meters square on the surface of a soil, for which rho one point nine megagram per meter cube. You have C fifty kilonewton per meter square, and then P thirty five degrees. Now. Uh, I don't know whether you have the same, uh, you know, whether you have the same stuff that I, I have here. Okay. Under normal circumstances, I would have asked you to draw it, then I would draw this picture on the on the board. But given given that I <laughs> I'm not functioning like that, so can you draw it for yourself if you don't have it? You know, it should look like this, right? It's a two meter square. Now, why am I asking you to draw this? I'm asking you to draw this because, you know, I want you, when you draw it, to be able to say something has changed from figure 1408. No, no, not figure 1408, figure 1418. Yeah? You see? So, if you are able to draw it, you will see that I put, this is what I keep telling you, this is what I keep teaching you. I put my length equal to my breadth equal to two meters. This is telling me it's a square footing. This square footing is different from this strip footing, figure 14, 18. Okay? So, if I do that, then my brain should be able to say to myself that, okay, I have a shape that has changed. So, something must change to the original strip equation. All right? And but however you see here, the centrally located load is also inclined at an angle of 20 degrees to the vertical. So with reference to that figure 1418, I have two things that has changed now. The shape has changed, right? And then the load has changed. Okay. Now the question that you should also ask is on the next page. I'm already on the next page, figure 14.65. All right. This is the inclination factors proposed by Mayor Hall, the top five. So you just stick in there. Now that is being taken, that is taking care of the inclination. All right. And then for this one here, it says using the bearing capacity factors in figure 14.22 for T equals to 35 and for a square footing, blah, blah, blah. Now can we like look at figure 14.22? You have that figure with you? 
Which slide is not clear? <laughs> the slide not clear, sir. Mm. But do you have, I mean, do you have this this set of notes that I gave you a long time ago? This set of notes was given to you guys a long time ago, right? Is this is this not clear to why? Okay. All right. But is it <laughs> okay? All right. I I I sent a WhatsApp earlier on to Shakila. I'm not blaming Shakila. Shakila has been very good. Very very. Uh, how how else can I say it? Very efficient at helping me out. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> All right. I'm not. I'm not uh, blaming her. I'm saying that, uh, you know, this morning I sent to her uh, what I'm going to talk in advance, all right, uh, for today. So perhaps uh, when, when, when that message was relayed, it was already too late for her to send it to you people. I, I thought of sending it earlier, then I sort of reneged on it because, uh, because I thought to myself, if I get things too early, then maybe they will forget about it. But in future, I'll try to give you uh, as much as possible. All right, this thing. Anyway, coming back to this uh, to this example. All right, the example is in Figure fourteen point two two. Try to get to Figure fourteen point two two. All right, here I am on figure 14.22, okay? When you look at figure 14.22, you look at the top. It says strip, square, and pile. Yeah? Okay. Now, in figure 14.22, you, you just have that. But I also want you to look at figure... 14.19 So, have you been able to do that? Two minutes. Figure 14.22 is on, on page 14.48. That is correct, Arman. Akmal Arman. Figure 14.19 is on page 14.43. Yes, Erin. Lama tak jumpa Erin. Okay, Erin je. Amy pun. Mulah. <laughs> okay. Alright. Now, ask yourself, what the difference? What is the difference between figure 14.19 and figure 14.22? Right? Okay, good. One, uh, Rohimatu kata tu apa? Rohimat, Rohimatu is saying to me that is the shape. Fine, good. So, figure 14.19 is the bearing capacity factor, factors for a strip footing. Figure 14.22 give you a strip, square and a pile. Pile usually, right, is the depth is uh, downwards. I mean, the depth is much bigger than the breadth, okay? All right. So, you see now the equation on figure on page 14.65. I'm back here, right? Here. I'm on figure 14.65. You see this equation here? This is a normally a strip equation. All right? Not a normal. <laughs> this is the strip equation. But the n sub c, n sub q, and n sub gamma is this one here. Not on figure for uh, whatever that figure is earlier on. Not the strip formula. So the n sub c, n sub q, and n sub gamma has been taken care of for a square footing. Now, why do I stress this? Because a lot of students, they get confused. All right? I can also use the shape factor. I can use the shape factor of the equation for in brain Hansen. All right? Then I put a diff... I would use a different value. I can... At that point, I would still use the strip footing 
and sub C. Here, the street footing and sub C has already been changed to a square footing. Okay, so please do not get confused. All right. Now, I, I'm assuming that uh, you can, you know, read this for phi equals to 35 degrees and for square footing, then uh, N sub C is equals to 90, all right? Uh, N sub Q is 44 and N gamma is 54. I'm assuming that that is easy for you to do, all right? For a vertically loaded square footing in this equation, we haven't changed any, anything uh, with respect to the inclination. All we are doing here, all right? is just taking care of the shape using in the strip equation we change the bearing capacity factors into squares uh, into a square bearing capacity factor so we got that now we find the inclination factors as proposed by mayhop i can also do this problem using bring bring hansen okay but for now we are using mayhop so then I do that, I sub C, I sub gamma. Now I just multiply it by the, you know, this is the, the first term here. The first term here is because of the cohesion. So I just multiply the cohesion and that's the modification due to the inclination. Now this is the uh, modification due to the unit weight, all right? This is uh, due to unit weight is because uh, half gamma B N gamma. All right, guys. So, if you can get to that, then uh, the reduction is just forty-seven percent. Do you have any issues on that? Amy says, "Got it." Rohimatu Toyiba. Shape good. Muhammad Norak easy one minute. Method. So, so basically then, we have done all the modif modification that we required, uh, that is required. We have done the shape, we have done the depth, we have done the inclination. And then I keep saying to you that if you see clay, you do it twice, all right? Always put this into your head. If you see clay, do it twice, the analysis. Undrain and drain. If you see sand, you just do it once do we do the dream all right uh so i am going to go uh, for another example uh trying to explain uh that part of the undrained drain but for now we have just done the uh modification that it to the strip footing now we have to go to the allowable bearing capacity all this while we are doing gross capacity uh, gross ultimate bearing capacity all right now this is going to be a little bit uh esoteric or, or how shall i say it? it it's going to be a little bit complicated because i'm trying to explain uh things in general you know, under allowable bearing capacity but we will go to an example and then you will find that it's much easier to understand all right at the same time while i'm saying that you should have great fifth edition with you all right so if you don't get what is at the bottom of page 12 and then uh, page 13, all right, until the uh, until the red here my, on my uh, transparency is it is red here, all right. Page 14 is red, okay. Until that point, until that point, then uh, it's okay if you don't get it. But uh, I will try to. Uh, reinforce what is trying to what is trying to be conveyed to you there 
uh, through an example. All right? Okay. Uh, Lauber bearing capacity. All this while, we did a uh, gross bearing capacity. All right? Uh, ultimate, gross ultimate bearing capacity. Now, we have to say to ourselves, we have to find the allowable bearing capacity. Generally speaking, we have this equation. All right? But, you know, it doesn't work like that. Okay? You will see from the... Uh, from the bottom notes that um, it's all pretty complex, a little bit more complex as you know uh, why it is, right? So how we should do it is that we should um, express the ultimate load, all right? According to Scampton for long-term condition that is as shown in the bottom of the page, okay? The allowable, the, the, the factor of safety is being applied only to that first term, all right? Not the, not the, the, not the whole thing. Okay. And then Q prime, I'm over, already over on the next page, okay? Q prime, effective overburden pressure. Um, Q is the total overburden pressure at foundation level. And then the, I'll just go through this pretty fast, but, and then I hope you can get an example all right, I can get to the example and you will find it easier, okay? So, if you are anxious with the fact that if you don't understand uh, much of what the lower part of page 12 and 13 is, don't worry about it yet, okay? So, the terms in bracket is what we call the net ultimate bearing capacity, which is equal to the gross ultimate bearing capacity minus the effective overburden pressure at the foundation level. Now, Craig does this equation much easier for students. I will refer to it later after, once I get to the, uh, red, the red line. Yeah. So, the gross ultimate capacity, I'm, I'm still on page 13. All right. The gross ultimate capacity is equal to originally, this is what you get, right? For the strip putting. C and C, Q and Q, half gamma, B and gamma. If you have beneath water table, this you are pretty familiar by now. I hope if you have a water table, right, you minus the uh, unit weight of water. So you get beneath the water table, Q prime and Q will differ and density or unit weight. Gamma is buoyant value. When I talk, when I use the word unit weight is gamma, right? Density is rho, right? To Again, I will remind you to get gamma, you have to have... Uh, Rho multiplied by G. Okay, now the factor of safety generally is about three. Okay, then if you are to, re to refer to Scampton's equation, all right, it allows also for the long term calculation using uh, effective strength values uh, and buoyant density. So if you play around with that, because by now you should know that if uh, if it is saturated, then you know that P sub U is equal to zero, right? And then you get Q allowable C U and C divided by factor of safety plus the overburden pressure. Okay, now you need to go to I. You need to go to an example. This is the example, page fourteen point five six, and then we'll talk about all of this uh, on page three hundred six for the same equation, all right, to be used. Okay, let's go to the example. Yeah, I'm here now. All right. Okay, it says determine the allowable bearing pressure that should be used for design of a square footing. 
three meters square. So again, the, the, the question here is that it is a square footing, three meters square. The minute you see that, you say to yourself, oh, oh, I got to be careful here, right? It's no longer a straight footing, so I should apply the right uh, modification, okay? Right factors uh, in response to the uh, request. So the footing is to be placed uh, a distance of 2.5 meter below the surface of the saturated clay soil. The minute you see that, you say to yourself, okay, it's no longer on the surface. I got to be careful here, all right? And then I also say to myself, this is not sand, it is clay, all right? It so happened that this question says to you that it is saturated. But every time you see clay, you say to yourself whether someone tells me it is saturated or it's not saturated, you say to yourself, do undrain, it is saturated. Do drain, okay, it is still saturated, but the dissipation of pore water pressure is already not there. There is no longer excess pore water pressure. It behaves like sand, okay? Drain, undrain. You have to get this right. If you have a problem, you better say that. Say <laughs> you have a problem now. Are we okay? All right. See, the thing is, the thing is, if I am in, in the, the auditorium hall, right, I can see your face. Here, I cannot see your face. So, I don't know. Farah. Nak repeat apa? I forgot what I I I I said a few minutes. Which one? Yang undrain drain tu. Okay. Uh, the example tu akan tujuh nanti. Tapi but what I will I will explain again because I I I you know I see clay, right? I see clay. I should have two situation. I say drain, undrain. Right? In the undrained situation, it is saturated. Tahu tak? Ni gambar ni, you should draw this, this gambar besides, beside the soil properties ni. Gambar lah ni. See the water table is up here. Right? Okay, brah? Okay. <laughs> Alright. Draw this first. You, you, you guys forgotten. I thought you saw mechanic. Did Draw this, this first, right? Draw this picture. I give you two minutes to draw this or five minutes. You draw it. You say this is the three by three meter square, all right? And then it says two point five meter below the surface of a saturated closed soil. Draw the surface. Put water table at the top. Two point five meter. Okay. And put this, uh, wait, it doesn't say do, so, sorry, sorry. The water table is located at a distance of one meter below the ground surface. Water table was here. All right, one meter. Now, I will I will go to the undrained drain. Suppose, all right, suppose this equation, sorry, what kind of question? Sorry, the question doesn't say the water table is located at some distance. It, it just keeps quiet. So what goes into your head then? Let me take a piece of paper here. Right? I'm going to draw something, guys. Alright? Here is my footing. So let's say it's a B times B square. Let's say it's at some uh, distance from the surface. Now say the equation doesn't say it's not the equation. Why is it? I am always referring to this. Say the question doesn't say a distance of one meter or two meters, whatever, the water table. Because I said to you that when you see clay, you must do things two times. One and drain. The other drain. If it is undrained, saturated. If it is drained, Behave like sand. Senang lah cerita macam ni lah. Okay? Like sand. Sand, you normally take effective value.
unrain saturated. Now, um, if it is unrain saturated, question doesn't give you uh, the distance of the water table. What do you do? You put the water table at the surface. Okay? Alama. Why Why you cannot see what I draw? Need a number. Can you see this or not? Yeah, your camera is pointed somewhere else just now. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> okay. But is this number of time is gone? Okay, if I put in front of my face, number of No, saya tak nampak kabu. Kabu. Saya rasa oh, okey. Ah, se se ah. ambil gambar, se hantar kat Shakila WhatsApp nanti dia hantar kat kita orang. Kita orang tengok. Okey. Nanti I, nanti saya tulis kat sini, right? Tangkap gambar ini. Okey. Okey. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No worries. Alright. Okey. Uh, I'm there too. Okay, so this picture, this small picture, ni, can you see it or not? Beside the soil properties. Okay. All right. Anyway, you try to remember this. You try to remember that this picture that I'm taking, all right, and the one that says tangkap gambar, okay, the one that says tangkap gambar, all right, is not the the example. This picture is trying to explain to you that if the water table, water okay, table. Uh, is not being specified, you put it at the surface. If it is at the surface, clay is saturated, all right. So it is undrained situation. The drain situation, it could still be saturated, but uh, drain mean drain in clay means when you load it, right? When you put the when you put uh, your building on clay, right? There is excess pore water pressure. Are we clear with that? Okay, excess pore water pressure develop. It's like you sitting on a ball, all right? Now there is an increase in the pressure in the ball. Okay, so uh, the the clay particles within the the pores of the clay particles they are not happy because they are not their original they are not in their original situation right the the pore water pressure now has increased so it is excess pore water pressure right okay so in class I would normally if you recall from the soil mechanics class I would normally put my book on my on a book on my head and i say i'm stressed right so because i have additional load here all right so that's the same situation with the clay okay so this excess for water pressure needs to be dissipated all right you remember my pp because you know you, you remember my cheek yeah mm -hmm. you don't like it all right so you want to go back to the original situation you say to yourself, unless that air pressure, which is now, you know, this in this case is artificially made, I made it myself, right? Unless that excess pore water pressure is being dissipated through drainage, all right, through drainage, then, okay, I'll be happier. So let's just, let me show that again to you. Mm, all right, so now I'm happier. So, mm, undrain, <laughs> drain. Are we okay or not? Okay, I hope okay. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to remind you on that. So, in the drain situation for clay, it's like sand. Sand behaves uh, always in a drain situation. Why? Because the pores are so much bigger. Now, in the in soil mechanics one, we said to ourselves, if you can still recall, if you can still remember, that uh, you have this. Uh, instantaneously right the permit the permeability of 
any fluid, in, 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 in our case usually it's water, that flows through the sand, all right, is, is so much faster, so much to the point that you cannot have any excess for water pressure. It's, it's, it's instantaneous. Okay? All right. So now let's just go to this example. You see the problem with soil mechanics right, is that you have to understand the principle. Otherwise, you find why is it one minute like this, one minute the other minute is like this. You can't, you know, uh, do the problems without knowing the principle, which is why some people find it difficult. All right. So anyway, moving on. Okay, I'm trying to get to this uh, to this uh, example. Now you see the soil properties. Soil properties says that's why now you have these two soil properties, right? You have the saturated density, 1.9 megagram per meter cube. That's about 19 kilonewton per meter cube if you think in terms of the uh, unit weight. Right? But by now you know how to uh, calculate that. Then you have the undrained cohesion, all right? See, this is what this undrained C sub U stands for. The undrained cohesion is, if you go back to your soil mechanics too, I didn't teach you that, but I hope it gives you an idea of uh, that C, all right, is the one of the uh, component that gives the strength of a uh, soil. Right. The other component is the friction angle. Right. The friction is, you know, as the as you put a load on 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 soil. All right. The particles, if you recall, some time back I did show it to you. This this idea of, uh, oh, if I can put this, you know, you have the two the particles trying to move over each other. That's the friction. All right. Some of you didn't do soil mechanics one with me, so I'm just trying to remind you of that. The other is this: uh, when the particles themselves are very fine, very small. All right. In in relation to in relation to sand, clay particles. You recall the first chapter when we did particle size distribution. We said to ourselves, clay particles and clay mineralogies are much much smaller than sand. All right, that's the one because of the attraction of the forces within the particles. That's the one that uh, that gives you the equation. So C and T. All right. So under when it is uh, saturated, the C sub U, the undrained cohesion, has a value, but T sub U is zero. You have to put this into your head. All right. You might is something that you know. You see clay saturated, you say to yourself, T sub U zero. Because sometimes I don't give that to you. All right. And people don't tell you that anymore because they assume you know. All right. Okay. So then you have this drain cohesion and the drain friction angle. These values they usually obtain from the triaxial test. All right. I think in your case, uh, those two those two lecturers who Taught you soil mechanics too. They didn't bother to you, when you were doing the lab. You didn't you didn't have any demonstration on the triaxial cell as much as I can gather. Many years ago, before before that, we always you know uh, show to the student the triaxial cell. We we teach them. We teach you in the theory the theory, but at least in terms of the uh, in the lab, the triaxial cell. Right, the triaxial test would have been demonstrated to you if you don't have a chance to do it. But I think in your case, you you you, you would not given that opportunity. I don't know why. All right. So anyway, uh, the, the the drain cohesion and the drain friction angle. All right. If you are not given that value, they usually give a C prime and P prime value for you. All right. Now, at least I know Moaz is alive. Are you Moaz? Okay. So what are we supposed to do? <laughs> what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to do undrain, drain. Undrain, short term. Another word for undrain, short term. 
drain long term. All right. Again, I'm going to remind you. You see clay or cohesive soil. You analyze two times. I don't know how many times I've said this to you. You analyze two times. Undrain or short term. Drain or long term. Okay. Uh, you see sand? You analyze once only. Drain or long term. Okay. All right. So now you see it is it, going to determine the allowable bearing pressure for short term condition. The short term condition is the undrained uh, strength parameters will be used. And then since we already said a few minutes ago, we'll use generally a factor of safety of three. OK, now if the Tazagi and PAC equation 14.9 is used, the ultimate bearing capacity is, yes, the equation. You look at this equation, the Zaghi and Pack equation. All right. When you see that equation on 14.57, you ask yourself this question. Okay. Q out equal to 1.3 T C is M C plus Q and Q plus uh, 0.4 gamma B get N gamma. Is that equation, all right, in that sorry, in that equation has the shape factor being taken into account. All right? Yes, of course. Ebenezer says no. Anyone else? Yes. Everybody agrees with Abby or are you all asleep now? Not sure, but nor Hafizi. I follow a je. Ya ada ni. Aman dia boleh follow-follow. Kena apa ni? Ada apa orang kata tulang belakang sendiri? <laughs> Iskandar hi-hi-hi. Fazli ha-ha-ha. Eh ni nak belajar macam ni. Macam ni I give up lah balik tidur. <laughs> Kalau Zairin kata don't know. Okay. Alright. Mak Noah Hafiz kata. Alright. Tak apa. You go back to that figure yang gambar tu tadi. I need you. What figure is that? Uh, figure 14.18. Right? Are we there yet? Figure 14.18. Yes or no? Yes. Then figure 14.19. Yes? Okay. What is the relationship between figure 14.18 and figure 14.19? You see, in figure 14.19, ada the formula ni. Nampak lah? <laughs> ha. You know, you look at the chart, you kena tengok semua betul-betul, satu-satu dan -satu, tengok. Yes? Okay. Yes, the formula. Yes, figure 14.18. Yes, figure 14.19. What's the relationship between figure 14.18 and figure 14.19? Shape die straight footing. Apa ada ni Razin? Shape die straight footing. Shape bentuk, die mati. Straight footing, tapak jalur. Straight footing, Anis Najiha kata. Okay. Now, I'm going back to this uh, page. 14.57 ni macam mengajar tuition ni ya Allah tapi tak apalah figure 14 eh figure pula page 14.57 alright alright figure 14.57 I mean page 14.57 see the top of the equation alright is that the same equation is that the same equation as the straight footing no. Whose equation is this? Yeah, it's kind of pandai cakap. So, whose equation is it? Okay. Imran kata tezagi. Hmm. Okay. Tezagi and pack. Ah, okay. Now you show to me on your set of notes where, what page on the slide. On the slide lah, yeah. That it is tezagi and pack. I'm not going to open it. You show to me. 
the Zagi and pack the Patu pack pula. <laughs> Where in your slide? Hafizi will answer it. No. Iskanda, you like to talk, you answer it. Page 8 on the slide of bearing capacity. Muhammad Imran kata. Page 8, let me see. Page 8. Ada the page 8. Okay, effect of footing shape on bearing capacity. This is the equation. Nampak lah. Alright. Okay. So, square footing. Alright. So now, okay. Now, I'm going back to the example kan. Mana dia lah pula example ni. Oh, dia dah belagi kat sini. Okay, I'm going back to the example. Okay. This is 14.56. So now, I I I am looking at the 14.57. It says Q out 1.2 Cu and C plus Q and Q plus 1.4 gamma D and gamma. Now you guys are pretty certain that now you say to yourself, I'm using an equation which has modified the original strip equation, which include the shape factor for a square. Get that into your head, all right? Because I I am sorry I have to say it that way, but you are a student, you tend to you know, not discipline your, your your brain in that sense. So for some of you, you are able to do it. Some of you, I have to use that kind of word before you get it. All right? Now, that's a shape. The equation has already taken the, the factor for the square, yeah, to be in the equation. Why do I say that? Now, if you look at your earlier example, all right, your earlier example, which was the one on the uh, inclination, all right? Can you take that out and you see to you see on page fourteen point six five? Okay, fourteen point six five. Here I am. You go fourteen point six five too, all right? In this equation. Is this a strict equation or uh, any modification has been made? Now nobody is answering me. I gave you the answer earlier. Modi AB says modified. Yang ini tak modified AB. This one is not modified. This equation. Go back to that <laughs> bigger 14.19 that he added. That is CNC. This. this is not modified. The equation. But the bearing capacity factors has been modified because they use figure 14.22. Figure 14.22 took into consideration the square footing and gave you a different bearing capacity factors. In this one, you don't do that. They say you take the bearing capacity factor of a strip, you multiply, you increase it by twenty percent for the first factor. Are we okay, guys? You see how it's confusing. Are we okay, guys? <laughs> Okay, if you're not okay, I, I'm still going to move on. Okay, so now you see there, this is an equation for a square footing. Okay, for phi sub u equal to zero degrees from figure 14.19. Now you see this is figure 14.19. This is figure 14.22. Yang ini, sorry Moaz, I'm, go I'm going to speak in Malay for a while, right? And then perhaps you can ask them what I mean. But I'm just, just trying to stress to them certain things. So, this is figure 14.19. This figure 14.19 is a strict footing. This figure 14.22, remind yourself that 
there is a street, there is a square, there is a pile. Ship has been taken care of. All right, that's why here, all right, CMC and QNQ and N gamma is a straight footing. Then Tazagi say for the first component due to cohesion increase 20% and then change this last component to 0.4, increase it to 40%. Okay, guys, if you get that, that's why you take the N sub C, N sub Q, and N sub gamma from figure 14.19 and then in, do what Tazagi says. So when it comes to bearing capacity, here's where your problem is usually. You don't know what chart they are all about. You don't know when it is being changed, what has been changed. So help yourself then. Okay. Uh, so when the undrained situation P sub u equals to zero. Then you can get n gamma, n q, and n sub c equals to 5.7. Now you recall n sub c is 5.7. This is because that's what Tazagi said when you look at that chart in figure 14.19. Okay? But the actual answer, the theoretical answer, which I went through with you a couple of weeks and months back, right, is 2 plus pi. 5.142 okay all right so then you get this lah q out 1.2 cunc plus q q allowable you divide by the factor of safety all right and then you get all this stuff by right you should get everything 298 kilonewton per meter square okay oh. now In the next paragraph, <laughs> in the next paragraph, okay, in the next paragraph, uh, I want to change the N sub C values according to Scampton. Remember, I'm still doing this uh, saturated situation, all right? Okay. All right. Now, in, in, in uh, by the way, before I forget, right, in, in using this gamma, right, you know, what you, you usually have gamma saturated and you should have gamma above the water table, right? Normally, in, in soil mechanics, they teach you that, right? But one meter, actually, by, by the time you get to our, to, to designing and to the real life situation, one meter, really, right? Uh, you have gamma and then you have a boundary between saturated and unsaturated. Well, that doesn't work actually in real life. Okay? It's, it's not like on this side of the border you are in uh, Malaysia, on the other side of the border you are in Singapore. It doesn't work like that with soil. So if you have gamma equals to 10 units, then as you progressively get to the surface of the soil, it is usually uh, about 9.8. So a lot of the time, people use the same numbers for gamma saturated and gamma just uh, above the water table when in relation to clay. Okay. So next time, if you see some, uh, you know, somebody asks you, you, you see a question and you say to yourself, sir, you didn't give me this uh, gamma. Then you say, well, it's going to be the same then. All right. Unless it is given, then do something. Otherwise, just assume. So. That's why you see the numbers there sometimes, right, uh, are just uh, the same. Now, moving on in the second paragraph here, all right? The value of N sub C was related by means of the Scampton expression. This is Tazagi. This is Scampton. What did Scampton say? We did this before. Scampton said this, all right? Then I can find the N sub C value, which is equal to 7. Then I stick it into the same equation again. And then I get this new value, 304. Okay. So again, why am I doing in the here? Here I'm applying Tazagi and Peg. Why am I doing here? I'm doing Scampton. And what does Scampton say? There is N sub C. When I use this N sub C, do I have 1.2 in here? No. Say you are alive to me. Otherwise, I feel like I'm talking to the uh, to, to, to the ball. Amy, say you're okay. 
Okay, okay. No, right, say, right. Then okay, no need to <laughs> not to unmute yourself. <laughs> Where's Ayn? Is Ayn still alive there? Ayn? I don't know, Ayn is still there or not. I don't know, is Akila by any chance around? Akila, you are absent today. <laughs> ah, you are here. First thing, doing you good? <laughs> Okay, all right, so back to this 14.57, right? Okay, you have this. This is taking care of the Zagi and Pack. This is taking care of uh, Scampton, all right? So now I get from the Zagi and Pack. Note I'm still doing under Andre in situation. Under the Zagi and Pack, I get 298. Under Scampton, I get 304, all right? Okay. Um, So what do you do? You can perhaps go and find another way of doing an Andre situation. We normally do this uh, in the real world when we design, all right? We just don't take one method. We, we do Tazagi and Pack, we do Scampton, and if there is another uh, method, which I haven't been uh, exposing it to you, then we put it in the table, and then we say, okay, 298, 304. If we get some other uh, method, and then they say to us that it is a uh, six, I don't know, 600 kilonewton per meter squared is usually that method is not in the ballpark. It's not in the same uh, prediction as the other two. So 298 and 304 in, 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 in soil, that's pretty good because you notice that our factor of safety is very high. Yeah, it's three. It's not like uh, concrete, which is 1.25 or 1.2, that kind of thing. So we say to ourselves, right through these two methods of prediction then we can say the average is perhaps about 300. okay now let's say i'm quite happy with the undrain situation I'm, i i want to move on to the drain situation the undrain situation yeah is over and done with let's do the drain situation the drain situation on page 14.58 all right okay now, long-term condition. Just using the for phi, phi D or P D, right? Drain or P prime, otherwise 36 degrees. You have Prandtl value of N sub C, Reissner value of N sub Q, and Kafka Carousel value of N gamma, right? Uh, if you look at that figure, 14.19, all right? We get fourteen point one nine. Yeah. This we got fourteen point one nine. N sub C. Okay. I can use the Zagi N sub C. I can use Prandtl N sub C. All right. And then I have N sub Q. N sub Q. I can use uh, what? The Zagi, and also Prandtl. Right. And then N sub gamma, I can use uh, the Zagi plus this small little dot is Kakwa and Carousel. All right? So why did I choose this, 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 uh, these guys here, Prandtl, Reisner, and Kakwa Carousel value? Because I want to, right? Because I've already used the Zagi values earlier on. If I want to use the, uh, the Zagi value here, all right, I can also do that, all right? Say I don't use any of these values. I use the Zagi's values for phi d equals to 36 degrees. All right? But this is just to show to you I can pick and choose who I want to use. Are we okay? All right. So then I decide to use this the Zagi bearing capacity uh, bearing capacity factors are slightly different from those listed above, but these quoted values will yield a more conservative result. Now you see here I'm trying to use the shape factor for the uh, square footing. This is Brin Hansen. This is Brin Hansen. You can't see me. All right, you can't see me, but can you, can you see this thing here? I'm trying to show here. Figure 14.58. 
Right? Okay. S sub C, S sub Q, S sub gamma. Right? Now, on figure 14.5A, figure 14.5A, do you see the difference that is trying to be shown here? Here in figure, it's not for figure 14.5A, page 14.5A. This is 14.57, right? 14.57, I'm trying to show here, I am using Kazagi. Here, I'm using Scampton. Now, in the drain situation, I'm trying to show you Right, I'm using also this uh, shape, uh, shape factor, all right, shape and depth factors, shape and depth factors. All right, now can I use the shape and depth factor here in this uh, undrained situation as a method? Yes, if the data is given, then do so. All right, doesn't mean that you cannot use this. See, so again. The purpose of this example is to show to you all those modif modifications we make, yeah, we made, we are trying to use them. So it could be in the undrained situation or in the drained situation. It, it is not fixed. If you can use it in the drained situation, fine. If you cannot use it in drained situation, you want to use it in the undrained situation, fine. Again, as long as you have the data and as long as the method is applicable. Now, for the Scampton's method, we cannot use it in a drain situation. Why? Because Scampton says, my method is only for play in the undrained situation. You see? All right. Now, shape factor, depth factor. This shape factor and depth factor is also what we call the Brin Chanson method, right? Okay. Why in this problem, we do not have to use the inclination factor. Any answer, please? Rosairin, you are able to see me now, right? <laughs> Good. Uh, why we do not use the inclination factor in this problem. By the time I get to this point, you don't you don't even remember your question anymore. Any ideas? Go back to the question and then compare that question to figure 14.18. What has changed? What has changed is just the shape, isn't it? What's the other thing that has changed? Anything else has changed? Anything, guys? Come on. Has the vertical load changed? Is it now inclined? Why aren't you answering me? Akmal says no, it's level. What do you mean by level, Akmal? The load is vertical or inclined. When I started off today, <laughs> when I started off today, what did I lecture you on? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's look at what I lecture on. The first thing I talked to you today. Yeah. What is that about? Akmal will have to answer me. Vertical, Akmal, no, Akmal will have to answer me. What is this about? Effect of inclination, me. Now he's not answering me. You see, when I first started off today, like Iskandar said, okay, right, the load is still vertical. It hasn't been inclined. Today, the first example uh, that we did was that is to take into account of the inclination. If there is no inclination, why should we be doing anything about it? This is why we don't have an inclination factor in here. Yes or no? Hmm. Okay. Then when you look at this, you say that factor. You look at that death, death factor, you say to yourself, what has changed from figure 14.18?
Then we say to ourselves that, that initially, when we derive the equation C and C plus Q and Q plus half gamma, B and gamma, or a straight footing, it was on the surface. Okay. Then now, in this problem, it is below the surface. All right. And we make a modification to that. So we have to apply that def, uh, modification. All right. And we say to ourselves, this is no longer a straight footing. This is a square. So I have to apply a shape factor. All right. Now, if I apply of all, all of those, then I will get this other equation. Uh, I, I'll get the other answer. All right. With all the correct, uh, C, you know, uh, C prime and T prime values. Okay. The C prime is equal to the C drain values. The P prime is equal to the T drain values. All right. Okay. So now I get uh, 1,000. Well, let, let me just use a rough figure 1,400 kilonewton per meter squared in the drain situation. In the on drain situation, I have 300 kilopascal, kilonewton per meter squared, right? So, when it is raining, like right now in, 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 in this part of my world, it's about to rain. I have some clay out there, all right? So, all the pores in the clay is going to be filled up with water. And let's say that uh, I predict by my calculation, I don't know whether it's right or not, it all depends on the site investigation that is being done, that it's about 400 kilopascal when it's raining heavily, all right? And soon, all of that pore water pressure, excess pore water pressure in the clay is going to be drained, dissipated away. All right. So I will get the 1,400 uh, kN per meter squared value. Now, my, my, the, the building I'm living in right now is still on the same clay. Right. It just so happened that, you know, uh, the same load is being applied to the clay. All right. Now, which of those strengths that is supporting my building should I be focusing on? During the, during the time when the clay is all filled up with, uh, the pores are filled up with water or when it is completely uh, dissipated, you know, in the drain situation. So, respond to me. Say to me which one, drain or undrain? Well, I take a little bit of a walk. Wake up, guys. Muhammad Imran says dissipated. What does that mean? I said drain or undrain. <laughs> drain or undrain. Is Mira around? She's probably making quay for Raya now. Hey, come on! <laughs> no one is now uh, responding to me. Shakila says Andre. Anis says both. Why are they both? Anis, at least I know what you are thinking. Okay, Shakila both. Nadia, ha ha ha. I don't know what that means. Iskandar say Andre. Anyone else? Mama no Hafizi say Dre. Mama, I'm done Andre. Dre. Dre. Okay, fine. Now, you see my building here, the building I am in, all right? The load is always constant. Yes or no? You agree. You have to agree with me. You know, my building here, the load, right? I am sending here, you design the, the, the building for the floors and the column, right? You say 1.25 time date load, 1. God knows what for life load, yes? All right. 
aren't you always saying that you know uh, you're taking care of the life load and you're taking care of the dead load? Sometimes the life load is less, sometimes it's more, but you always take the the uh, the, the maximum value of the life load. All right? Why you are trying to say that? Okay, Azlan is not in the building some days, but some days he's there. I better take care of the one he's there because my floor is supposed to support him. Yes or no? That, you know, I'm trying to make you think now. If the days, if I only design my floor for when Azlan is not there, then when he is there, my floor is going to collapse when he's, he sits on, when he stands on the floor, sorry. Yes or no? Right? So, if I take the lower of the value, right? In other words, I take the undrained situation when the strength of the soil is supposed to support the building, all right? That's the least value. Or should I take when there is no rain, the pores are all, uh, you know, the, the, the excess pore water pressure in the pores are all dissipated. That's when it's not raining, all right? When it's not filled up, when it's not saturated. So when it is not straighted, uh, saturated, it's strong as opposed to when it is uh sorry when it is uh you know when it is drained it is strong in in comparison to when it is undrained in other words if i now go outside and stand on the clay and it has been raining for the last one hour <laughs> okay i will sink all right i will sink if i don't if I, I I don't do that, if I wait until the, the, the hot season comes, you know, when it, the Muslim Kamara, hot season comes, I stand on it, I don't sink because it is strong then. So shouldn't I be taking care of those times when it's going to rain? So this is the why this is why we don't choose the value of one thousand four hundred, we choose the value of three hundred. You see, now in my building, say, right, is uh, the building that I uh, that I'm going to apply pressure to the soil, right? Which happen to be clay, right? My building is now uh, the the load is one thousand two hundred, okay, one thousand two hundred. So the soil is one thousand four hundred. One soil is 1,400, the, the strength. So it can support the building. All right? And if I say that's the uh, ultimate bearing capacity, all right? The net bearing capacity, if you will. Okay? Then oh, I'm okay during the drain situation. But there is going to be a time when the clay is going to be filled with pore water pressure. All right? And my building is still 1,200 kilonewton per meter squared. And it gets weak at that time. The strength of the soil says the, the, the ultimate air capacity, the ability to support the building is only 300. What happened to my building then? It's going to fail through bearing capacity. Okay? I hope you understand all of that. Good. Mama Noafizi say collapse. Ebenezer say sink. Sink. Well, I, I wanted to say the word sink as well, but I wouldn't want to use it because uh, there is another aspect of the uh, soil, all right, which we call settlement. Sinking usually we relate to settlement, but collapse most probably, yes. But go back to that figure 14.18. You will recall that in my the first few slides of the transparency, all right, I say there is uh, heaving on the sides of the uh, on the sides of the street footing. Right? There's a heaving on the side of the street footing, and you will recall that figure fourteen point one eight is to do with general shear failure. And then I talk to you about local shear failure, and I talk to you about punching shear. Figure 14.18 and all the things we have been mentioning for now is in relation to general shear failure. Okay? All right, I'm going to move on now to uh, the next.
uh, next slide, which is to do with the this one, 1.6. All right, then I'm going to go back to this uh, red line. Okay. Okay. All right, do you want like two minutes break? I don't know if we can finish all the examples today. Huh? Five IR, Magno Afizi. Putri Nuzo, yes. Five minutes? Okay, five minutes, right? All right, five minutes. The time now is uh, four o'clock, all right? We take five minutes and then, uh, you know, then we try to uh, finish the remember i i the last thing i'm talking about is general shear failure right just for that train of thought then i'll go to 1.6 and then we go back to that uh page 14 on uh the other way of solving this uh problem right uh using the other equation okay five minutes from now yes liana mm, okay five minutes <laughs> all right take five minutes Four or five, I'll come back, inshallah. And I hope my data is still available. Otherwise, come nanti tengah tengah jalan, nabi mati semua. Eh, tak tahu lah. Hello. Tak ada siapa nak on mic ke? <laughs> Semua rehat betul ni. Razin. Oh Razin. Razin ada tak? Ni ni cerita berapa sekejap ni? Ya sir. Razin jual apa tu? Kuih? Ah kuih raya sir. Ah tak jual pun. Kuih raya tu. I think it's a good idea lah. Pertikir lah untuk apa dia kan. Mungkin tak jadi engineer raka kan. Lagi bagus je lah jadi peniaga. Ah ada yang buat je. <laughs> Saya jual je. Ha? Ah? Ada yang buat. Ya. Yeah. Ha. Ni kat mana ni? Ni kat mana? Saya kat Kuantan, kat rumah. Kat rumah? Rumah tahulah kat rumah tapi kat mana-mana boleh pergi kat mana lagi. <laughs> kat mana ni? Tolong Intan. Kat Kuantan. Ha? Kuantan. Mana? Kuantan Pahang. Kuantan? Oh Kuantan Pahang. Hmm. Alright. Sir, Yang dah jual apa tu ke? Liana jual biskut. Dan Fitra jual ayam. ayam. <laughs> Aduh. Actually, I wanted to ask. Shakila, where exactly are you? Right? Shakila, dia kat mana? <laughs> Sir, I jual papupia carbonara. Sir, nak tak? Pasti. <laughs> I know rumah tapi dekat mana? Kelang ke? Syakila dekat Melaka. Oh okay. Hmm. Alright. Just for this moment kan? I mean is, is this okay with you guys? I mean I don't know what else to do beyond this. I am actually like I said to apa tu Syakila. I am persona non grata at UPM. I can't access my email from 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 where I am right now. So you need to consider whether 
we need to consider whether this method is good or not. But I, I think uh, what Shakila actually proposed to me, uh, like what Dr. Balkis uh, did with you. Uh, what is it? Uh, take video every so often and then, uh, then uh, send it to her, she'll edit it and then put it on YouTube. Amy says video. Diana say yes, it will be easier that way. Putri, me too. I am video. Everybody wants video, but this is what uh, has been said in the upper two. What, what, the, the, the survey, right? But for me to do the video, I, I was wondering how many times do I have to do the video taping and, and talking about things. You see? Mark no Hafizi, my line not okay, I are. Chariman says agreed, sir. Uh, see, I, and then the other thing, I don't have the internet and, uh, you know, for now, I don't know when it will be fixed. It, it seems that it's going to be fixed by, 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 by June, but I cannot guarantee anything, guys. <laughs> Uh, I that's something just uh, for me to, to 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 gauge, right? And then we'll see what happens. Do you know whether uh, what is going to happen to you guys in terms of final exam and tests and whatnot? Yet, I I, I seem to think that they don't know what they're doing yet. Any answer? Not there. Uh, Daniel, don't know. Para, we just we just read all now. Okay. Emira, don't know. Liana, they extended the online learning till the end of semester. Yes, I know that. This is just responding to Liana. Uh, I'm aware that this is going to happen to you until uh, June, until next year. Okay, the online learning to the end of the semester, yes, but it, <laughs> it may not be happening to you, right? But yeah, you will, uh, to, to January next year, only possibly you will come back. Uh, so you have to get used to this, all right? Well, about China. You see, when I started off this, 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 uh, two, this presentation tadi, I said that actually who? I was a bit depressed because who the World Health Organization thinks that this situation is going to be another four years. All right? Another four years. Don't worry. Uh, PZ, don't worry about it. Because my stuff uh, is also in, 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 in the room. And when you know when they have when they they have this uh, SOP which allowed some of the people to come back uh, in uh, for some of the lecturers or some of the university staff to go back. They have all this very strict SOP. So it's a weird world, you know, very weird world. So I don't know. Maybe they ask you to come back for what? You see, the thing is that, all right. Here's what I know. For you people, it doesn't matter whether you are, you know, uh, on university or not. By that, I mean, all right, the risk, the risk of you dying. All right, now we have to talk about that, right? The risk of you dying is low, okay? All right, but uh, in general, however, the statistics in Malaysia says uh, otherwise, because, uh, you know, let me talk about that later. But in the rest of the world, there are three critical groups, okay? What they, what there is evidence, especially from China, which, which they, from Wuhan, China, which showed that they have all this data and is being uh, validated again in Europe, all right? Uh, and also in America. But America has more, uh, has other new things coming in. Okay, the first highly critical people in China and Europe is if you are above, 70 years old 
All right? If you're above 70 years old, then, you know, your immunity, your immune, your immunity, uh, well, your ability to fight back, all right, is not that great anymore. Compared, right, if we are talking in relation compared to you guys who are in the 20s and whatnot. The second group, okay, which have high death rate are people who have underlying problems, meaning people who have diabetes, people who have high blood pressure, people who have, you know, all sorts of, they're not healthy. They don't take care of their body. Okay. So by the time, it doesn't matter where, whether you are 70 or you are 50 or you are 40 or 30, whatever, if you have problems with your health, you don't take care of your health. All right. Then the risk of dying is high. Okay, now the third group of people who have a high risk is those people who are pregnant. Okay, the women who are pregnant. All right, now there is this, uh, this you know, and people like you who are in their 20s, 30s, and then uh, below 40s. And you know, if you don't have any underlying problem, you don't have gout, you don't have uh, uh, diabetes, you don't have uh, high blood pressure, you take care of what you eat, all right, then usually you can fight the disease back, all right. So uh, when, when, you know, when they, they refuse to take you, ask you to come back, is because they are worried that you might give it to all these three groups, all right. So that's why there is all this physical uh, distancing, you call it social distancing, okay. So, uh, that's why I don't understand why they have to stop you from coming in until I realize that maybe you, you need to go back to your parents, you need to chit chat with them, then you cannot, you know, manage uh, self-isolation, self-quarantine for 14 days, then it becomes a problem. And you see all these uh, borders and whatnot, right? Up to your MC only, you cannot, you cannot move from one place to the other because uh, some people are not that disciplined. So it becomes a problem. Huh? Huh? So unless the only way out is, uh, you know, with big confidence, going back to being normal is if you have a vaccine or you have a drug, you know, the other way is people who get sick, they go to the hospital and then there is a treatment, a drug, right? Uh, a, a medicine, a vaccine is something which you put in your body so that you increase your immunity, right? Your, your, the soldiers that is going to fight this virus, right? So uh, under normal circumstances, it takes four years to, to develop a vaccine. But, you know, who knows, maybe they can finish it up in two years. But who is giving us this very depressing news is going to be like this for another four years, they say. Maybe they're trying to cover themselves up by giving a high factor of safety. So, <laughs> I'm laughing about it, but you know, uh, you guys say you want to do heat, you want to eat, want to do heat and to do it at, uh, with your parents. I, it's not going to happen for me, you see, because uh, I don't know whether I, I, I'm infected or not, you see. And, and to, you see, there is two ways by which you can be infected. The first is if you are a putu, if you have a cold, you show system, right? You have cough, uh, you have loss of smell, loss of taste, uh, right? This what we call people who, who get the disease and they show symptoms. So you can uh, be having a temperature more than say 37.5. So that one. That's why the shopping complexes, they try to take the scanners and all. I mean, they, they take the temperature, your temperature, right? These are for people who have symptoms, okay? But the other one, the ones that don't show symptoms, you take their temperature, nothing, right? They are normal. <laughs> uh, they, they don't cough, right? Uh, these are the asymptomatic. So the asymptomatic, you know, unless unless you go and ask them to go to the hospital and test right whether they are positive or negative then only you know otherwise you don't know 
right? Now I'm giving you uh, what I know from this is because then you realize, you know, but I, you know, apart from all the the learning, the teaching, and blah blah blah, and I mean, I get depressed too, I get anxious too, but when I know all of these things, you know, all the knowledge and what is available now, then I realize that why, how, it, you know, how, how serious and why they are doing all of this. It doesn't make me happy. Okay, it doesn't make me happy, but it, you know, I mean, you know, for a person like me, you see, I can't go to the mosque, I can't do this, I can't do that. Every time I go to the supermarket, right, I, I freak out because I see people not 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 doing one meter away from me. So, macam mana? Right? You know, Pak Muka Razin, the snow moon there. So, anxiety and all of that, right? This is how it is, guys. So, all of you, if you're a Muslim, then I ask from you to pray to God. Then, you know, I, if you are not a Muslim, also pray to God to to make this, uh, you know, earlier. Which is why in in Europe, right? They are talking about managing the risk. You know, we open up, we 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 explain to people this is the situation. So you have to you know, learn to live with the risk, all right? Otherwise, we will be like this for the next three, four years until we get a drug or a vaccine. So, no one is happy that you won't come back to university because we love to see you, right? Otherwise, they macam ni je lah. You online je lah. Now, shall we get back to the lecture? <laughs> Have you gotten your five minutes break? Actually, it's a 10 minutes. Okay, where was I? Okay. I want to go on page uh, 14 first, actually, when I initially uh, stated, right, uh, when I initially started. But uh, uh, what I was talking about uh, the example just now, uh, we were talking, you also, I wanted to remind you of the fact that figure 14.18, right, figure 14.18, right, apart from the strict footing, uh, vertical load, all right, uh, initially, we said to ourselves at the surface, we also said that the, the equation that is uh, that we derive, C and C equals to Q and Q plus half gamma, B and gamma, is for a general shear failure. We have two other failures, right? The local shear failure and the punching shear. Now, if you look on page 15, we haven't done any um, modification with respect to this, right? So, now, on page 15, it's all about taking care of this local and punching shear. Now, Tazagi suggests, right, reducing the shear strength parameters, C is equal to two-thirds of C, and tangent P is equal to two-thirds of tangent P, all right, in the equation, this equation for the strip. What it means is just, you take the C, is equal to two-thirds C. You take the... Uh, the, the uh, when you have this P, all right, in the equation, you take it as two thirds of tangent P, all right. This is what the Zagi suggests to you, all right. So reduction is not satisf satisfactory as prediction uh, of failure occurs with settlement rather than shear failure. But that's the best we can do in terms of the general shear failure. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, in terms of the local and punching shear. So. Use the same methods as we have done previously, whether it is shape factor, depth factor, inclination factor, Scampton, Tazagi, and Peck. If it is for general shape failure, you do that, right? And then now for local and uh, punching shear, the cohesion now is two thirds of the general shear failure values for the cohesion. And tangent P is just two thirds of the tangent P. So if tangent if phi is 36 degrees, all right, you now say tangent, 
tangent T, you multiply two by two third of the value of the tangent T. All right, guys, for the <laughs> for the modification of the general shear failure. Okay, so everything else remain the same. Only change the values of C for the general uh, for the local and punching shear, and change the P for the uh, of the general shear failure for the punching shear failure. Okay. All right. Now coming back to this equation. Now you 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 know in the example here, I was uh, looking at example with fourteen point five six, and I was trying to explain all these things in here, right? Which uh, all these things in here, which which is like all these words, and you couldn't uh, probably understand all these things here. So all these things, all those things here, are found in that example. Okay. So, and I also said uh, that now you probably realize that the values of C and T, right, comes from the lab. And the values of C and T is also a function of what you do in the site investigation. So you should realize by now why your site investigation is important. And by now, you should also realize if all I want to do is find the bearing capacity, right, bearing capacity of a building, all I need is C and P, yes or no? That's all the equation I'm using. I mean, all the parameters of the solve that I'm using, if I'm interested only in bearing capacity, okay? But of course, we're interested in bearing capacity, and also we are interested in settlement. And by now, you should realize how my prediction is going to be accurate if my C and P that I obtain from the site investigation is accurate. Right? So, anyway, that's what this is going to tell you. Right? This, this, this paragraph is going to tell you. If you cannot do all this site investigation, then you, if you look at some of these uh, building codes. In some countries, they have all these building codes. They give you all these numbers. So, uh, in, in, when you are designing, and sometimes all you get is just SPT values. Right? They don't give you all the other things. Because some, someone didn't spend some money, someone didn't, didn't un understand soil mechanics well, so they just do all sorts of things. So there are all these other uh, tables that are available uh, in some of the building codes, in some of the, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, British standards, all of that. So table 14.1.1 and table 14.10 are just indications of what those values are okay all right so that's just to show to you that these are just tables and when we design and if uh, we can't get the you know the correct si because somebody didn't do it so we had to be re to revert to some of these tables and these tables are usually very conservative and that's why the cost of the foundation begins to get higher and the cost of the building begins to get higher. Now, I wanted to go to example 8.1 to 8.4. I don't know if I can finish that today, but I'll try to get to 5 o'clock. Uh, if I don't finish to whatever example, what do you want to do? Please uh, consider that. Uh, After this, talk to Shakila, I hope. Now, I'm going to get Craig's book. I'm, I'm going to open to page 306. I hope you are there as well. Do you have your book with you? Or you have it in, you left all your books in the, the, in the wherever it is. Para Shasa say yes. Nur Emira, I have it. Okay. Everybody else have it too, right? Kalau tak ada, if you don't have it, then perhaps you can uh, take a photo of it and share it with your friends or something. Okay, Abby has it. I don't know what to do if you don't have it. 
I mean, one way is to take a photo. You guys are much better than me with this thing, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not that too savvy with respect to all these new things because I have too many other things to do. Like from world, see, beside me now, all these books need, you see this? All these books need reading. I haven't had the time to read it. There's a PDF version in internet. Good for those who don't have it. Para Shastra Bagur. Good. All right. Is it the same fifth edition, Para? Okay, fifth edition is good. If you get the eighth edition, good luck to you because you wanted the fifth edition. <laughs> Maybe you can ask Para uh, where to get the PDF version. All right. So, okay, I'm on page 306 of the fifth edition. I'm looking at equation 8.7. All right. Okay. Okay, it says F is equal to Q and F over Q and Q F minus gamma D divided by Q minus gamma D. Now, why am I referring to this equation? Because, you know, when I was explaining page 12 just now, right? And then I'm trying to explain to you above water table, below water table, and then you look at all this C and C and Q and Q. Some people find it difficult to, 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 to understand what I am trying to get at. So in the end, I said to them that maybe if you look at this equation on uh, page 306, it's easier. Now, and then we are trying to do this uh, example using equation 8.7, right? It's the same uh, equation, if you like, as what I have been explaining on page 12, 13, and 14, all right? It's just being written differently, okay? So F, F on the left-hand side, all right? You, do I need to show this? Uh, some people may not have uh, this book, so maybe I give them time to, to see this formula and they can write it down. I hope everybody has the book, but here you go. F equals to Q and F over Q N equals to Q F minus gamma D over Q minus gamma D. Okay? All right. Now, I have written it up there because I thought that maybe, you know, you can see it. Can you see the, the, the words that I write there? There, I mean, <laughs> yes or no? No, uh, I don't know. Anyway, okay, as this is, uh, you can see, all right, okay, F is just the factor of safety, all right, F is the factor of safety. And then Q and F, all right? Let me just look at Q F first, all right? Now, F is equal to Q and F over Q N. It's equal to Q F minus gamma D over Q minus gamma D. Now, Q F, Q subscript F, all right? Is what we call Q subscript ultimate, Q ult, all right? They use the word F. F means fail. Failed through general shear failure, failed through local shear failure, failed through punching shear failure. Okay, QF. So generally, the equation, however, is 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 addressing the general shear failure. Okay, so QF is Q sub U or Q sub out. Okay, now minus gamma D. Gamma D. All right, is the if you recall on ticket fourteen eighteen, is the equivalent surcharge. All right, the surcharge can be changed into a uh, layer of soil, thickness D, and then uh, with unit weight gamma. Okay, so, all right, now, Q sub F is the gross ultimate bearing capacity. Okay, then Q and sub F, a Q sub N F is the net ultimate bearing capacity, all right? So Q sub F is the gross value, all right? Minus gamma D, it becomes the net ultimate bearing capacity, 
So Qn sub f equals to Qf minus gamma d. Now, Q is the gross given foundation pressure. What is that? The gross given foundation pressure is the total, okay, total foundation pressure from given load. In other words, what you, you know, from the floor, it goes to the column, and finally, it goes to the footing. All right? Goes to the footing, and then divide by the area, that's what you give to the soil. So it's the dead load plus life load, divide by the area, and then it gives you that. So it's the gross given foundation pressure, total foundation pressure. And then if this uh, Q, you minus that gamma D, yeah, the, again, the gamma D is because we initially designed the, no, we initially get the equation because we said that the foundation footing was always on the surface of the soil. Okay? But then we said to ourselves, we need to modify that because we didn't, we do not have a situation like that in, in real life. Right? Most of our footing is underneath the soil. So, underneath the soil of layer depth D of unit weight gamma. So, if Q minus gamma d it becomes q sub n which is the net foundation pressure from given load okay guys i hope you're okay <laughs> all right so now we can go into uh, example 8.1 okay example 8.1 is on page 308 are you there, guys? Iskandar Zukana, 30 minutes more. 30 minutes to what? <laughs> okay. All right. Shah Irman. Oh, first time I see Shah Irman here. All right. Now, example 8.1. A footing 2.25 meters square is located at a depth of 1.5 meter in sand. The shear strength parameters being C prime equals to 0 and P prime equal to 38 degrees. By the way, you see, I think if we are going to use this method again, we probably have to, you know, read in advance, all right? Then it is easier for you, all right? Much, much easier for you. It doesn't matter whether you understand or you don't understand. What is important is that you see the thing first, and then it is being reinforced. The understanding is being reinforced through you listening to me. And then perhaps you want to discuss after that, and then maybe even if you have problem after that, you might then come back to me. Okay? All right. You want to master berbuka ni Iskandar. Good luck to you. All right? Because uh, if I don't finish... <laughs> oh, right. Iskandar is in Sabah. No oh, wonder. Hmm. All right. Don't kid Iskandar. We have to finish this because otherwise I will just say, you know, I'll do 8.1, 8.2. I leave it to you to learn yourself. Uh, right? I leave it to you to learn yourself. Uh, all the other examples. Okay? At first, I even said to Shakila that, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll just WhatsApp. Lah. You just learn yourself. Huh? You know? <laughs> okay, look. Bear with me, we finished 8.1 and hopefully 8.2 and then if not, just, uh, you know, you decide on what to do with uh, 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4. But uh, just trying to apply example 8.1, alright? I mean, sorry, just trying to apply the, the equation that was uh, in equation 8.7. 8.7. So now you have a footing, 2.25 meters square, it's located at a depth of 1.5 meter in the sand. Now you see words, sand. You say to yourself, sand, I don't have to do two times. I only do one time. All right? No Andre. Do only drink. Okay. And that's why when uh, you see the parameters, the values given, C prime is equal to zero. Why? Because the sand happens to be cohesionless. So, the only strength parameters that is being uh, galvanized to support your building comes from T, the angle of internal friction. 
Then it says, find the ultimate bearing capacity. Find the ultimate bearing capacity is the gross ultimate bearing capacity. All right? If the water table is well below foundation level, and B, if the water table is at the surface. Okay. Now, if you recall, I said to you that if the, you know, if it's full of water, then the strength is lower. All right? The strength that is lower, you have to take care of the strength that is lower. Because that's the time when it rains and your building is still having a constant load. My weight doesn't change if, uh, you know, if there is rain or if it doesn't rain. My weight still remains the same. But I know that if it is clay, if it is filled with water, the strength is lower than when it is dry. But since my weight is still the same, and if I stand on the clay when it has been raining for days and it's all filled with water, I am going to have general shear failure at least. You see, but in the dry days, then the sand, I mean, the, the clay is able to pull me up, all right? So now in the sand, this is trying to say to you, okay, if you have water in the sand, all right, the water table is high, what happens to it, okay? It's if it is at the surface and if it doesn't. So it says the unit weight of the sand Above the water table is 18. The saturated unit weight is 20. And the depth of the water table is uh, what? Uh, 1.5 meter. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, I said that if I don't make any dis the distinction between below and above, then you just take the same amount. It doesn't matter. Okay? Here, the distinction is shown to you. Uh, then it says... The footing is 2.25 meters square. So in your head, be careful, all right, of which method I am using, all right? Am I putting the modification first or am I changing, am I using the, the, the bearing capacity uh, factors that has been changed, all right? So for a square footing, the ultimate bearing capacity with C equals to zero is given by QF 0.4 gamma BN gamma plus gamma DNQ. Now he doesn't explain this to you, all right? But you should know by now that it is the Zagis and Tech modification for the square, all right? What he is doing is that he's using the Zagi and Tech method, okay? So, the equation should have been 1.2, all right, 1.2 uh, C and C plus uh, gamma D and gamma, uh, 0.4 gamma B and gamma plus gamma D and Q. They are not using the Scampton's equation. Why can't they use Scampton's equation? Repeat again, all right? Well, I, <laughs> you don't repeat again. I mean, I said it earlier. Scampton is for P sub U equals to zero. And P sub U equals to zero is for clay. Okay? Clay. Under clay. All right? So, now, because it is cohesionless sand, it is a drain situation, all right? Or otherwise, you call it uh, because they don't, do this uh, test in a drain situation, they you see prime, okay, uh, what you call effective values, all right? So now Q sub U or Q sub F equals to 0.4 gamma B and gamma plus gamma D and sub Q because the value of C is equal to zero. Now for P prime equal to 38 degrees, the bearing capacity factors are N gamma equal to 67 and N Q equal to 49. Therefore, now figure 8.4 is the same figure as figure 14.22, I believe. All right, you have to check that. Figure 8.4 is bigger. 14.22. Let me check, all right, 8.4. No, figure 8.4 is not bigger 14.22, it's bigger 14.19. Are we okay? Figure 14.19. Because it is the bearing capacity factors of the strip footing. Why then I don't uh, use the bearing capacity factors of 14.22? Because I'm using Kazagi and PEG, whereby I say to myself, if it is the first term of the cohesion, 
cmc of the strip protein i increase it by 20 percent therefore i get 1.2 cmc and then i have this gamma d n sub q and then square uh, shape factor all right which is equal to 0.4 multiplied by gamma b and gamma so you get for p prime equal to 38 degrees use the n sub gamma and n sub q and i get that value of q sub u or q sub f which is the gross value all right gross ultimate pairing capacity 2408 4a all right when the water table is at the surface the ultimate bearing capacity is given by 0.4 gamma prime b n gamma gamma d n blah 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 all the same now you get 18 minus uh 9.8 all right so you get 10.2 all right and you get the gamma 18 minus 9.8 equal to 10.2 so you get 1365 kilopascal Okay, easy enough, right? Because we have seen this example in uh, earlier. Only that the equation now is just being amplified to you. It influence of uh, water table and uh, in sand. I work that equation just now in the drain situation for the clay. All right. Okay, for Tozagi and Pat. Now, example 8.2 is a strip footing to be designed to carry a load of 800 kilonewton per meter again it's always good if you can draw all these things beside your your example all right like i don't know whether you can see this but i'm going to show it to you see i draw i drew it all of this because i thought you can see it Hazli, can you see this uh, picture that i drew beside this example 8.1 Diana says no. Why can't you see it? <laughs> anyway, no, Abby, Abby says no, Isa says no. Okay, 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 okay. So draw it. Draw it, all right? Draw it yourself and then it's so tiny. Okay, this book is tiny too. What do you want me to do, Shireman? <laughs> okay, I can try that. But I don't know whether you can see it or not, right? But it's always better that you do it yourself. What I'm trying to say there is that when you read the question, always try to draw the diagram, all right? If, if I were to see in, uh, this in front, sorry, if I was standing in front of you in class, in the auditorium, I would have said to you, take five minutes, draw, all right? Uh, your, the problem, right? And then I will draw my problem. Uh, I will draw the same problem on the board because it is important for you to be able to identify the problem to to then right uh, be able to identify the method, all right? Because I know that uh, these days uh, people don't teach you that anymore, right? For some reason or another, okay? So I'll try to do that, Shakila. And uh, if I forget, remind me, okay? All right uh and then uh maybe i can draw a bigger one and i'll send a picture then right okay uh then okay now we go to example 8.2 after all iskanda wants to go and start cooking right he's, he's already tired <laughs> he forgot that i am uh, also a retired person who should be cooking as well right anyway example 8.2 now you have a strip footing. Now the minute you see it works like strip footing, okay, you say to yourself, I don't have a problem about modification of the shape. But I just got to be careful whether it's in sand or it's in clay. All right. Now it carries a load of 800 kilonewton per meter at a depth of 0.7 meter in a gravity sand. At a depth of 0.7 meter in a gravity sand. Okay. Not clear again, sand. So only drain. Don't bother with undrain okay drain is effective values then it says shear strength parameter c prime because the zero p prime equal to 40 degrees okay nice clean sand c is zero right not all sands have c equals to zero all right but this is clean cohesion set uh, cohesionless sand and then it says determine the width of the footing if a factor of safety of three against shear failure 
is specified and assuming that the water table may rise to foundation level. All right. So it says that the problem is general shear failure. Don't bother with local shear failure. Don't, look, don't bother with punching shear. Now, in example 8.1, they didn't specify that. So you say to yourself, well, since you didn't specify to me, all right, about general and about local and punching shear failure, so you must be asking me only about general shear failure. Okay, in 8.2, they specify it to you. Just in case you decide to do local failure and local shear failure and punching failure. So most of the time, if they don't specify anything, don't put into your head, all right, that you need to do it. If they specify, if they specify to you, then you must do it. Okay, I say this to you because I always see in some students. The question does not specify it, but they make them life difficult for themselves. You know, they they do things which the question doesn't ask from there. Okay, so if the load is not inclined, why are you doing the inclined load? I see it so many times, and sometimes I in the final exam I ask them why do you do that, and they just look at me like you know, I'm from an, from another planet. So only you can explain to yourself why you do all these things. Okay, which is why, if you notice, when you don't understand something and you ask me, I always ask you, explain to me what you understand. It doesn't matter how, you know, how much you understand, but just explain. Then I can see where your problem is. Otherwise, it's difficult for me. Okay. Because I will say the same thing again and again, and you still, you know, can't, can't see what I see or someone else see. So anyway, all right, uh, factor of safety given. Now you have to determine how, how, how you know, how wide is your uh, footing is going to be, all right? Now it doesn't say, say a square footing, it says a straight footing, okay? And then it gives you all the water table. Well, the unit weight of the same 17 and below the water table the saturated unit weight is 20. Again, I'm saying too, if, if that is not given, you just take whatever value they give you. All right, because in real life, below the water table and above the water table, one meter difference usually doesn't give you sometimes a big difference in the unit weight of the soil. All right, now for P prime bearing capacity factor, figure 8.4. Again, figure 8.4 is not to do with. Uh, is the original figure 14.19, right? The strip footing. And then if you look into it, and gamma equals to, uh, 95 and sub Q equals to 64. Now, in their figures uh, 8.4, they give limited uh, people, right? Meaning they give you only one line. Then let's just look at figure 8.4, right? Which is on page 305. They only have Hansen, Meyerhoff, and then uh, N sub C and N sub Q, I believe it's uh, due to Tezagi. All right? Okay? All right? Uh, but, you know, you will look at, if you are working in real life, or if you look at another book, they will give you more and more. Now, what I wanted to show when I first used that figure 14.18 is that you can use any of these values. But then, you know, uh, the ultimate value would, would that you obtain, that you calculate, would be the one that you try to average out. Okay. Now, so um, if you use figure fourteen point one nine, you may get different values of n gamma and n sub q from figure eight point four. All right. In a test, in an exam, which you are, you may be worried. These values are usually given to you, or sometimes I give you a table that says p equal to zero this is the value p equal to 22 is this value p equal to 35 is this value p equal to 40 is this value and then i get some student going do all the problem using all of the p's and i just i'm shaking my head i don't know why they do that all right so my point you have to understand the question then you can do what what it is that the question is asking 
Now the question asks you for T equals to 40 degrees, C equals to zero. It is in the sand and it is a straight footing, right? So then I just st uh, stick it into the same equation, equation on page 309, all right? Like in 8.1, okay? All right, find the gross value, the Q sub F, and then find the QN sub F, which is the net ultimate bearing capacity. So minus gamma D, all right? We don't know the value of the breath B, all right? So we get that for 485B plus 750. Then the net foundation pressure is just 800 over B minus 17 times 0.7, right? Q sub N is equal to 800 over B minus 17 over sub N. Then you just use that same question on uh, uh, on page is 306, which is the equation 8.7, just substituting the, the, the equation, right? And then you get that value equal to B equal to 1.55 meters. Do you have any problem in that? Hakim enter, Hakim left. Muhammad Nur Habibi, let him leave and enter, okay? <laughs> now, I'm already on example 8.3, and I have 10 minutes. And I will be able to finish example 8.3 <laughs> in 10 minutes. <laughs> example 8.4, good luck to you. You can read it yourself, I suppose. Okay. 8.3, a footing 2 meter square is located at a depth of 4 meter in a stiff clay of saturated unit weight 21 kilonewton per meter cube. Remember when we did site investigation, we said to, our state, to, our, to ourselves that clay can be all right, can, can be identified. You can have weak clay, you can have, uh, you know, medium stiffness clay. All right, I'm reminding you of all these things again. All right, so now you see stiff clay of saturated unit weight of 21 kilonewton per meter cube. Now, if that was stiff clay, it must have some value of the strength. Okay, the undrained strength of the clay at a depth of 4 meters is given by the parameters. C sub u equal to 120 kilonewton per meter squared and T sub u equals to zero. Now, I said to you, whenever you see clay, you have to do the thing twice. Do it drain, do it undrain. If, however, the parameters of drain is not given, then must you do it? Of course, you have to do it, but there are no values, so you cannot do it. If I don't, you know, if the values are all given, then you have to do it. Are we clear? I hope you get what I'm saying. In this example, they only give the undrained values. So the example is only taking care of the undrained situation. Because no data is given for the drain, they stop there. All right? Okay. Now, so in this case, all right, DOB is equal to 2. All right, the depth over the breadth is equal to and figure 8.5. The value of N sub C for square footing is 8.4. Why are they using this figure 8.5? Figure 8.5 is by Scanton. All right, it's by Scanton. And Scanton says, right, figure 8.5, and one of the figures in our in the set of notes is given to you as well. I can't remember what in the page is it. Oh. I can't remember the equivalent. Uh, I have to look for it now. Okay. Uh, figure. What figure is that? Four factors. Okay. The yeah, figure 8.5 is your figure 14.23. Figure 14.23 is on page 14.51, okay? Figure 14.51. And if you look at figure at page 14.51, figure 14.23, it clearly says to you, short-term bearing capacity factors for foundation in saturated clay. P sub U equals to zero. Don't use that chart for anything else other than P sub U equals to zero for clay 
in undrained situation. If you use that, then I don't know what to say to you. Because those are the very people who fail. All right? I cannot help you then. Okay? See? So, in this case, DOD equals to 2. Right? Okay. And from figure 8.5 or figure 14.23, the value of N sub C per square footing is 8.4. All right, in figure 14.5, uh, 14.23 of page 14.51, I have one per circle and square and I have one per strip. All right, in the earlier example that I worked with you, I used a formula. Why do I use the formula? Because I do not, I do not want to use a chart. All right, so if you are sitting in a test, for example, <laughs> which you probably won't, all right, but I'm saying to you of, of the flexibility of being or doing things like, for example, you know, Razin, for example, okay, you know, he's got all the time in the world and then, you know, in between classes and doing homework, he's selling all this cake. So you are flexible. So you have to then to be flexible in approaching soil mechanics problem as well. Okay, so um, Scampton only for play. All right, now. So in you use that equation, you get uh, N sub C per square fitting is 8.4. So you find the gross ultimate bearing capacity, C sub U, N sub C plus gamma D. All right. Then uh, use N sub F is just equal to uh, 120 times 8.4 because Q sub, again, Q N sub F, if you look at that equation, 8.7. All right. Q N sub F is equal to Q F minus gamma D. So QF is equal to C U N C plus gamma D. U N sub F is equal to C U N C plus gamma D minus gamma D. So it becomes C U N C. Okay, guys. <laughs> so uh, for factor of safety equals to three, you get Q sub N equals to one thousand eight divided by three equal three three six. Then you find Q, which is equal to Q N plus gamma D. You get equal to four twenty. So now you have. Uh, two meters squared, you multiply by the area, the allowable load from the column to your putting is 1680 kilonewton. If your dead load plus life load you transfer to that column is more than 1680 kilonewton, your soil cannot support that load. Clear? Hopefully. Now, what is the time? Five more minutes. I have to stop here. Example 8.4, you learn yourself because it is to do with inclination. Okay. And also to do with this uh, may half method of inclination as of, of, uh, of not, uh, not inclination of eccentricity. I did that with you before the MCO. Now, for the last five, for the last five minutes, I don't know what to say to you guys. I probably stick to this method. Because I cannot find the time to like find uh, like like I don't know how to make a videotape of myself, right? At least in this one, this method, I am interacting with you. I feel like a little bit like I'm talking to you. If you still want me to make a video of myself, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now uh, in the next one minute. If you go through all of this, right, 8.4, I believe you can, you can learn about it. The important thing is to always ask yourself, what method is this? Where is this theory coming from? What chart is this? Where does this chart uh, comes from? And why should I only use this chart? What happens if I don't have this chart? That's the important thing. So in four minutes, do you have anything to say to me? I mean type to me or write to me or say goodbye to me or whatever until the next time i see you whenever that is <laughs> i see i've i've even forgotten your 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 faces you see i see this name right noriza sahira binti samad now if you were to put if you were to put noriza your what the heck do we call it the the, the your name in the class, right? What do you normally put your name as? Ah, okay. You didn't do some mechanics one with me, right? No, is that okay? I remember now. Okay. 
Ya, tripod. Tripod tu di mana? Farah, tripod ni nak dapat kat mana? Copi je. Oh, dah mak. Okey. Yang tak, yang kamera ni, nanti kejap, 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 kejap. Farah kata ini, uh, apa tu, uh, tripod ni, masa, masa guna, while, while I'm giving this lecture, or while I'm making the uh, video, which one? Both. You know, kalau kata tripod, wait, 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 don't start talking, you know, no, don't know, everybody start talking sama raya lah, apa benda lah, you know, I'm pursuing this dulu. Yang kata si Farah tadi, apa tu, the tripod ni, okay, I have to move around the tripod juga uh, to show to you the pictures and what not, isn't it? So you still want me with the tripod? The tripod too is, is just to make it stable, okay, but when I want to show things to you on which page and all that, Then uh, I have to remove it from the tripod, no? Uh, saya cadang kamera kamera uh -huh. doktor tu menghala menghala ke notes. Kiranya tak nampak muka IR lah, tapi dengan suara. Tapi, okay, I agree with you. Tapi tadi buat tak boleh pun tu nanti Shakila akan work it out with me lah. Tak sebab kamera. I Kamera IR macam zoom sangat. So, kita orang tak nampak mana yang IR tunjuk tu. Okay. Ha. Zoom ha. tu. Benda yang zoom. Tunduk. Tapi kalau, tapi you dengar suara saya memang betul lah. Kalau ada that visual, I agree with you. That was my original idea as well. Tapi, dah tadi tekan-tekan dia tak mau kot. Itu yang masalahnya. Syakilah kata boleh angkat. Okay. So, uh, why don't I have a tutorial with Shakila? Shakila will be the boss, and then he make uh, you know uh, a tutorial on 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 uh, tekan kat mana nak dapat mana benda. Rasanya Iskandar kata rasanya kena flip kamera kot sebab pixel kamera belakang lebih baik. Jadi Iskandar, Iskandar siapa yang terer tu nanti Shakila uh, nanti Shakila buat WhatsApp group. Yang orang terer-terer, the people who are good in, in whoever wants to join lah. Tapi tak nak lah banyak-banyak sana kan. Alright, and then kita buat Google Meet sekali lagi sebelum, before the next lecture. And then tell me, IR, tekan dekat sini. Alright, because I, I when I was trying to tekan where tadi semua tak ada pun. So, ini para kata... IR ada dekat UPM ke? Saya boleh datang ke UPM untuk ajar. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Parah dekat mana? Sedang. Okay. Parah bagi dekat Syakila. Nombor. Nanti saya kontak dengan uh, para. Okay. Zoom dah itu hari pakai dah Fizi. Nak guna uh, zoom balik. Ayuh, okay sir. Itu lagi dah pakai zoom. The, the last time I use zoom. You want me to use zoom now? <laughs> you prefer zoom? <laughs> the last time maybe I'm busy. Dia 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 tak dia dia tidur ko. Dia tak datang. Ayah. Okay, macam ni ya. So, uh, para bagi tahu dekat uh, apa uh, Cakila nombor. But I don't know when I can see you. Alright, because all uh, and then where to see you and what not. Alright, then uh, I try to I'll try to contact you. Now it's already five or one. Dia boleh lebih ke masa lebih ni tak boleh kan? Boleh ke buka? <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that. Alright. Okay. So, any other question you want to ask me? Ke apa since this thing is tak payah switch off pun? Okay. Alright. Goodbye then. Selamat berbuka puasa if you are fasting. Abby, have a good time. Alright. Alright. Bye. Thank you.